What's up guys? So I'm going to be talking about what refresh tokens are and why you might want to be using them. This is kind of a more advanced authentication topic and you might not need this but it's very important uh, to know about and when you should use it. So I'm going to be just like get right into an example of why uh, of why refresh tokens are necessary and the problem that they try to solve. So I um, have this mutation that I just ran to get the uh, login credentials for these guys. So I have a uh, token right here. Um, and if you'd like to run this code and get the server running and see what I'm doing as I'm doing it and run it on your machine, I'll put in a link in the description below so you can download it. Um, we're going to just grab this token here. And we're going to come to the desktop client for uh, graphical. And if you don't have this, it's in the link to the description below. Um, and I'm just going to run me real quick. And I already added it to the header, of course, uh, authorization, and pasted my token in. So it knows that I am Boba and I am an admin. Now, for this example to work, uh, or maybe make more sense, uh, I basically have some permissions set up that a... Uh, only admins can create boards. Um, and if you don't know how to create permissions, you want to know that link in description below. That might be a nice video to watch before you watch this because it's really a reason. You don't really need refresh tokens unless you have kind of a, a more advanced permission set up. Okay, anyway, let's get jump right into this though. So we have Boba here. Uh, I'm logged in as this user. I'm just going to copy this and we're going to do a mutation and we're going to create a board, right? And it's going to let us, because of course we are a uh, admin, right? So bam, create our board, okay. But what would happen if, for example, I come over here and I change the database? So I'm going to go into psql, I'm going to connect to my um, GraphQL database. Now it doesn't have to be a direct database change, um, you could have basically maybe a resolver that revokes access. Uh, so maybe you have a resolver that says revoke admin access. And we're, what we want to do is revoke admin access to um, Boba. So I'm going to update the uh, update Boba so he is no longer an admin. So update users set is admin false and for the Boba username. So update him. He is no longer an admin. I'm going to quit out of this. Uh, so he just got revoked. He is no longer an admin. So he should not be able to create boards, right? Oh, what the heck? He was able to create a board right here. But if I come back here, put me, hey, he's not an admin anymore. What's happening? If I come back, I can still create as many boards as I want. But as we see right here, he's not an admin. And if we select username and is admin, and I think I have to wrap this in quotes, from users. Oh, huh. I need to go to psql. I wanted to show you guys in the database. Um, select username and is admin. In the database, it shows him not as an admin, right? users. Okay, so we see Bob, or Boba and Bob both not admins. So then why, if I'm coming over here, does it say, does it let me create boards, right? We should be, we revoked access to it. Well, the reason is we're checking whether they have access with this uh, JWT token, this JSON web token. So when we created it over here, Boba was originally an admin. So this token, as long as this token exists, Boba is considered an admin. Because we don't check the database um, to see whether Boba is an admin. We just check this token. And the reason we just check the token is because it's faster. We don't have to hit the database every time. So basically, our token is old, and it needs to be refreshed. And that's where refresh tokens come in. So instead, like we, I think we set this token to last like maybe a week or maybe a month, maybe a year, an X amount of time, right? And then they'd ha a user would have to re-log in. This is what keeps users logged in. 
Well here, what you do is if you use a refresh token, maybe this lasts for five minutes, maybe 20 minutes, and then it expires. When it expires, you have to refresh it, and you have another token which acts as your refresh token, and it gives you a new one. And the refresh token lasts maybe a week or so. Um, and so as long as the refresh token is valid, you can refresh this token. And that way, you, when you refresh this token, you get the latest information. You will know if this guy is an admin. And what's nice about this is also what you can do is anytime you're updating and you know you're going to like make this token old, is you can auto-refresh it. So now I've already coded this out. Um, so I just want to walk through what I've created um, and explain how it works and how you can implement refresh tokens yourself. So this is an example implementation and I'll have the GitHub code below if you'd like to take a look further look at this. So this is our GraphQL server I was talking about. I split it up into a new uh, file called auth.js because there's a lot of author authorization code uh, now and we want to basically have, it's not a ton, but there's a decent amount that it's nice to have split off and you can reuse these uh, multiple parts of the site now. Okay, so the first thing is I created a create tokens function, which we'll come back to because we need some context of what we're going to call this, and refresh tokens. So the first thing I want to go over though is try login. So this is the function that's going to be called when we want to log a user in. So now when we log a user in, we don't want to just give him one, but we want to give him two tokens. So if we go to the schema here, I created a new type, auth payload here, tab that over, um, which returns a token and then a refresh token. And so we're returning that with our login mutation. And now I also create another mutation called refresh token, which takes both and gives a new ones back. But back to auth, so try login here. Um, so we get the email password, right? And we have some additional information that we need to create the tokens. First thing we're gonna do is we have to find the user. This is the same as we had before. Check if they have a valid password. This stuff right here is same as you've seen. This is classic login stuff. And then here, after they log in, we're actually creating tokens. And I actually do slight uh, a cool little trick here to actually make this run faster which uh, let's talk about that actually so I call this function called create tokens um, which returns a token and a refresh token and that's what we're returning right so now there's two two tokens they're keeping track of and inside create token um, we're creating both tokens and a JWT dot sign is a promise so one way we could have done is had a wait here and a wait here. So I first create the regular token and then I create the refresh token, right? And notice how we create the token and the refresh token in the same manner. And actually, let me talk about that before we talk about this cool little trick. I'll keep that there. But uh, notice how there's no need to store is admin for the refresh token because this is really just used to uh, verify that we have a user and to refresh this token here. So this lasts seven days, this lasts 20 minutes. So every 20 minutes what we'd like to do is we'd like to refresh it using this token and then we'll store a fresh is admin. So that way every 20 minutes we're basically checking if the user is still using the site of course, um, if they're still an admin and we refresh that. So if, and this is very useful, let's say you have a subscription service and it ends after a month and the user cancels, well, you're checking every 20 minutes, hey, has the, is, is the, the month over yet? And you can revoke their access once the month is over. So it's handy to come and check frequently because you want to revoke access or whatnot. So that's, that's the difference between these two, but you'll notice we're using the same function to create them. And uh, this is a uh, async function here. Oops. Um, returns a promise so we can await it, right? So we can do it like this, but you notice when we do await, it makes it synchronous. We wait here for this function to finish. So I would run this, wait here, run this, wait here, and then I'd return it, right? But instead what I did 
is I'm returning the promise, right? So both of these will return a promise. And then I'm doing this promise.all. So both of these can run asynchronously and we wait for both to finish. So these are both running in parallel so they can finish. And it's, you know, creating a token doesn't take that long, but it's kind of a cool thing. It, they both run in parallel, saves you a little computation time uh, and your response is a little bit quicker. So you do promise.all and you pass an array of your promises and then we resolve all the promises. And then down here, we're grabbing those. So that's it. So you notice our login changed a little bit. Now we're returning two tokens, right? Um, now let's talk about uh, our add user because this got a little bit more complicated. So I now want to accept two tokens in the header. A uh, X token and an X refresh token. So I'd like to pass both of those in. And the first thing I want to check is if they gave me a token. If not, that's cool. We just keep going. That means they're not logged in. That's fine. Some of our routes, and what you could do is if your server doesn't handle any unauthenticated users, you could just throw an error here. You could say throw new error if you wanted to and say, need auth, right? But for my server, there's some things you can do, like for example, register. You can register if you're not authenticated, right? You don't want to lock people out. Um, so yeah, so we check if they have a token. If not, they just go right through. If they did give us a token, we first check. Is the token uh, still valid, basically? If it is, cool. We don't do anything. This is the exact same thing, right? Uh, we just we get the user from the token, we pass it here, and then we go on to our GraphQL resolvers, passing our user in here. But here's where the interesting stuff happens. Let's say our token is invalid. It's been 20 minutes and we need to refresh it. How do we handle that? Well, that's where this error happens here. And we grab the refresh token from the header. And then we call our refresh tokens function. Our refresh token function is going to take our tokens and give us new ones. Now, the reason why we only want to run this, you know, every 20 minutes, and you could change that. I think 20 minutes is a decent amount of time. You could give it an hour. Depends on your server, your setup, and how often you're going to be changing things, right? Um, and how long you can, you basically want to wait as long as you can afford to wait because you're making less database calls. Because refresh tokens has the call the database so it can get a fresh token for you, right? So you want to do this as not as often as you can, right? As least often. So it takes the tokens, creates some new tokens. And I'll talk about how this actually refreshes the tokens in a second. And then I like to do this little bit of magic here. Um, we are also, when we create this new token, we're getting the user while we're at it because we have to add the user to the tokens. So you just get new tokens that user. So this is pretty straightforward, right? We get new tokens and then the tokens are good now and then you can add this. But what I like to do, and I, I check whether we're given back tokens because you know something could go bad and I'll talk about that. And I actually, um, in the header, set um, the X token and the re refresh token with for the response. Um, and you'll notice I expose these so that the client can actually see them. So when I refresh tokens, um, I want to give it back. So for example, if I have a React application that's talking to my server, I want to give them back a uh, refresh token and the token so they can then use it. And this is how I like to do it. So it's very automated, right? I don't have to like actually call the refresh mutation if I don't want to. I can just keep querying stuff and I'll pass back new tokens to the React client on the response. So that what the React client would do is they would, in the response of a GraphQL query, they'd check the header and see if there's new tokens, and if so, they'd store those in like local storage or something. So that's what this bit is doing here. Okay, so lastly, let's just talk about refresh tokens. So that is this part right here. So here we're again just rolling through it very similar to the thing before is we check we verify the refresh token 
if the refresh token's not good, the user has to log back in, right? Because it's been maybe a week since they've logged into the website, so the refresh token expired. So we just if it if the refresh token's not valid and the regular token's not valid, that's when we just return an empty object. We have no user. Um, we say, hey, React client, tell the user to log back in. But let's say we the refresh token is valid. We have the user. Uh, we're storing the ID, as you saw up here. We uh, save the ID in the refresh token. So we grab that ID. We have a user ID. And so we grab the user associated with that token. And then same thing as we were doing before, we create the tokens storing the user and then we can pass back these tokens. So very simple, uh, very similar to how we do try login, we refresh the tokens. And that's pretty much it guys. This is how I do um, refreshing tokens so that way you basically keep your tokens up to date and nothing gets old. Um, and if we go to our resolvers, you'll see I just uh, added refresh tokens and try login. So now in our resolvers, for example, our mutation down here, call try login for login now. I just basically moved the logic over to auth. And then for refresh tokens, I'm just, I made that mutation and then I'm calling it here. And you actually don't have to call, make this async. Okay, cool, so that is it for this video, guys. If you have any questions uh, or comments about refresh tokens, or if you have a better method of doing it, I'd love to hear it, uh, hear how you guys set up your servers. So that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.